Uh, yeah, I mean, sure. I'll, I mean, I'm not going to go as I'm not going to go as generous as uh, Kevin Hart. But yeah, I'll, I'll send you ten grand if you make a bracelet. Hell yeah, dude. Yo, what is up, everybody? It's your boy Pete Manzanelli here for Poker Tubes, and today I am joined by a truly prestigious guest. You guys might know him as Mike McDonald's, aka Timex. He's a professional poker player, but of late, he's like a businessman. Mr. McDonald's, welcome to the program, my bro. Uh, thanks, man. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be on the show. Yeah, dude. So I, I see you got this website going on, and I just wanted to ask you a little bit about it. I think it's called Poker Chairs, and you guys like rent out chairs to poker rooms. Is that is that what you guys do? Exactly. Yeah. You know, it just seems as if there's, uh, you know, the t times are tough. People need a nice, comfortable chair to come sit on. You can just come and get whatever chair you want. We rent, we'll rent them out. We price them accordingly. You know, that's the. Uh, yeah, I couldn't be poker anymore, so I got into the furniture business. That's great, dude. Yeah, I'm going to be out at the World Series of Poker. I'm seeing these photos of these chairs, and I'm like, this isn't going to do. Mans needs a throne. I'm like, I'm going to go to Timex here, get me a nice throne for the World Series of Poker. Exactly. You know, it's I mean, all jokes aside, that could be a good business. The chairs in the Rio are fucking terrible. Right. No, you think about it. They get the massage therapist. It's all about improving the quality of life at the poker table. Why not have where you can swap out a lazy boy recliner right at the table? You know what, I'm going to go on uh, GoDaddy right now and buy some URLs because I think we're on to something. There you go, dude. If you don't, I'm going to scoop them. I'm going to scoop them. <laughs> All right. Sounds no, but good. so for real, tell me what this what this thing is because I'll tell you right now. I tried to go to this website. I'm here in America, <laughs> the greatest country yeah. in the world, and I just get a giant block. You have no permissions to visit Mike McDonald's site. What is going on with this bullshit? Yeah, so I'm, I'm sorry about that. I think it's basically – uh, so basically, we are we are a gambling website. You know, we're similar to a sports book. And as we all learned early 2011, I think I saw from an early episode that I heard your bank told you know, the the Black Friday days. But basically, post, post uh, Black Friday, you know, the US US is really enforcing very in, they're enforcing very strict gambling laws. You know, it used to be kind of like the Wild West. We had everyone operating in a gray area, and now you know our our license provider basically says that they take uh, not allowing Americans so strictly that they don't even really want to like, you know, let you guys get your foot in the door. Cause it's like, if people can even view the website, maybe they'll start VPNing and start making accounts and things like that. And it's, we just figured we'll be as, as cautious as possible and just not even let Americans look at the website. It's crazy, dude, because I'm, I'm a big DFS guy, too, and I'm pretty sure, tell me if I'm wrong, you guys have had lines where you could bet on, on DFS live finals. Is that true? Uh, to a very small extent, like we've done that for for a few for a few friends and stuff like that. I noticed uh, I noticed on your bookshelf you've got Dueling with Kings. Yeah, dude, Dan uh, Barbarisi's. Yeah, written by Dan Barbarisi, starring one of my best friends, Jay Rayner. I even I even made a couple appearances in there. Uh, but it's it's a, it's an awesome book, and yeah, we like DFS would be the the most natural transition to us. Like you know, long term we could have we could have sports, we could have a casino, we could have everything. But DFS, it's, it's kind of cool where, you know, if, uh, if our guy doesn't win an entry to a live final, we could let him basically buy an entry to the live final through our site. <laughs> and that's, you know, right. that's sort of one of the, uh, one of the options we have with our license. It doesn't restrict us to just poker products. Yeah, the, it, it's honestly like, I don't know why there couldn't be DFS poker. I know they, Daniel Negranos, they do this 25K World Series of Poker Fantasy, but whatever, that's like over the duration. But why couldn't you have, you use your models, your math, and you assign dollar values to these poker players, similar as you do the rates, and then you have a salary cap, and I get to pick a lineup. Why, why can't you make that happen? I mean, honestly, like, honestly you're, you're definitely onto something right here, and that's basically... A, a variant of what we're doing right now. Like the the one thing that happened, the one the one issue that sort of happens is, you know, let's say you're a DFS site. It's easy for the DFS site to sort of like pimp their product, to make their own podcast, to make their own advertising materials, because it's you advertise competing like man to man. In our business, it really seems like if we do a lot of our own promotion, it looks kind of shady. If we're like, come make this great investment where you're betting against us. We think it's not. We think it's not good. But what we think is what we think is going to happen. I mean, we think. I mean, I don't know if there are guys working on this right now or if there are things in the next few months. We think there's a massive space for someone to even just make like 
a fantasy poker podcast basically be like, hey, here are the things out here, whether it be stuff on poker shares, buying pieces of other people, betting on other sites that might have, you know, if other competitors come up with more competitive lines than us, to basically be like, hey, look, this guy's playing really well right now. This, he's had success in this venue, bet on this guy. This other guy, you know, his, you know, his wife just left him. He's on a bit of a downswing. You know, you might not want to buy a piece of him. Like, I think there's something like the same way I listen to, you know, dozens, maybe hundreds of DFS podcasts. And I think there's a lot of room for something like that in the poker space, especially as, you know, as there are more and more opportunities to invest in players. So I think, you know, I don't think we're the guys to be doing it because it just looks so shady if we're, if we're pitching that. But I think that, you know, I think long-term people will be doing that. I think there's, there's a lot more room for fantasy poker, I believe. Well, dude, I think you need to get over this uh, thing about worrying about looking shady, dude. We're about to have the two major DFS sites merge and having a monopoly <laughs> on the industry with no regulation. So trust me, dude, in DFS, we're all about the shadiness, dude. You're more than welcome <laughs> to dip your toes into the collusion. Yeah, I guess you know, that's, what, that's what we really need as far as, you know, pro collusion. I need to get, uh, you know, we just stars in full tilt. Fan duo and DraftKings, really what I need to do is just partner with everyone who gets bet on, get them to lose and stuff. Like, you know, we need to go full blown, full blown shadiness over here. Well, no, it, it is an interesting thing that I, I truly think would help grow poker because you see the way that these nerds break down, you know, they look, yeah. they're looking at past performances, right? And they're trying to find, is it predictive, dude? So you're telling me how much fun would these nerds have looking at like this guy in these turbo types tournaments performs over expectations compared to deep stack tournaments. Therefore, he's going to do better in this event. That'd be some fun shit. Oh, definitely. And the, the amount of analysis that can go into it, it's pretty interesting. Like my, uh, you know, so Jay Reno, one of my best friends, has done this for a living. Uh, my roommate at Banff uh, is A.E. Jones. He won the biggest DFS tournament of all time. He's even ignoring that, one of the biggest winners. Uh, both these guys, like the, the things that they think about when it comes to sport are like very, you know, at a very, very high level. And I think that, I think, you know, similar things could be going into poker where I think that, you know, you, it's, it's really easy to just kind of assume, oh, this guy, you know, if you look at our rates today, we had, we have, this is a perfect example. We have the $10,000 study, 11 guys left in it. You know, we have a guy with 9 million in earnings who's at a markdown. We have a guy with 17 million in earnings, three World Series bracelets at a markdown. We have a guy with 350K earnings in his career who's the highest markup when there's 25 bracelets across 11 guys. He has no bracelets. He has, I don't think maybe has like one or two final tables and that's the highest markup. Like we're, we're really trying to like figure these things out, but you can't see on top of everything. And there's, there's a lot more to poker than just, you know, than just who's a big name kind of thing. Like that's, that's something that I find kind of interesting with, uh, with my, like with my, uh, my business here. It's like my business partner, the way I got to know him is, you know, in 2014, I contacted him for poker coaching and it's like, you look, at, you look at my results. First two months of 2014, I cashed like $4 million or something like that. And then I and I realized like, I want to be playing even better. I reach out, get coaching from this guy who's much better than me. You Google him, you don't find anything. Like he's just you know an online cash game crusher. And there's a big, he's a much more talented poker player than I am. But there's just, you know, they're just like, there's the, there's the fame aspect and people seem to tie fame and skill into things. And I think fantasy poker, would be sort of one of the first opportunities to get look, you know, the best guys aren't necessarily the household names. I like it, dude. I need, to, we, I need to keep letting this marinate here in this big brain of mine, see if we can figure something out. I do slight detour. So you mentioned this guy, Beep, I'm a Jeep. Dude, I, mm -hmm. I want to talk to him about on the program. He's out looking for treasure right now. Can you tell me, can you tell people who might not know <laughs> what this kook is doing and how his treasure hunt is going? All right, so Jay, Jay, is an, Jay is an interesting guy. Jay is a very, like, he is one of the most, he's one of my best friends, one of the most unique guys that I've ever, I've ever met. And he loves kind of having a project, whether it's something that takes two hours or two months, but something where he can just really obsess over it, like, you know, uh, from the time he wakes till the time he sleeps, trying to figure out, you know, something new, whether it's solving some problem, get good at the video game, learn something about sports, just learn some new hobby. He's very like versatile. And you know, he there's this thing called Fens Treasure. Some some like art dealer in the States, some like multi multi-millionaire decided he was gonna like leave hide treasure somewhere in America and then give out a multi-million dollar treasure and then give out clues as to where it is. And then Jay poured himself into this so much that he he became like 
he basically told me and uh, me and my buddy one day. He sends us a message and he's like, "I found it." Like he just he just thought he decrypted. He just no no. I, when he says I found it, that means he thinks he decrypted the riddle. Like he's he's up in Canada. He's not even in the states, and he still is so confident. He claims he found it. So what we agreed to is that he can take a trip down there, and then I'll give him thirty to one odds that he can't find it. Um, so he took his trip down recently. He met the guy who did it. Hung out with him, got to know it. Like uh, Dan Barbaris is considering writing another book if, if Jay were to find it, I guess. So Jay went out. They searched around a little bit. Uh, they didn't end up. Uh, they didn't end up making the bet. The, the stakes of the bet were uh, his one and a half bitcoins to my forty-five bitcoins, which turned out to be a lower stakes bet today than I originally anticipated. Since that the crypto market's getting crushed, um, but basically, yeah. So we, we, I offered him the chance to run it back and give him another year. At like you know uh, shallower odds or whatnot, but he he decided. I think he, he may take another trip out there, but he'll be convinced. He'll be content with his multi million dollar treasure. I don't think he needs another hundred k of my money. Dude, I, I love this. It's like if like there's the kid that's just playing like Dungeons and Dragons and the mom's like, why don't you get outside and be active? And so then he just goes and starts doing LARPing. Like this is like the <laughs> DFS guy. It's like, go get out, do something active. And it's like, okay, I'm going to go on a real life treasure hunt. Jokes on <laughs> you. <laughs> Dude, That's I, right there, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I'm gonna have to talk to him. Yeah, no, he sounds like a great guy. He's also in that book, uh, Dan Barbarisi's. He trained him, made him a, a DFS hockey crusher. Very cool guy. We'll 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 keep tabs on uh, on his treasure hunt. It's some cool stuff. Um, Ask, contact me if you want it for sure. Oh yeah, no, I'll 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 definitely uh, I'll hit you up on that. Um, it's interesting. You mentioned that you're gonna give him thirty to one odds. I'm sure there's some people that would want to bet against him. I've heard you talk about with your site how everyone's all talk about you post these lines and they're like, oh, I want to short this guy, dude. He he sucks, dude. I want to bet against him. And you say no one ever puts their money where their mouth is. I know we're now, uh, you know, about a month or so into the World Series of Poker. Is anyone manning up and betting against anyone, or is it still all talk? Uh, yeah. So I, I mean, I, I'm usually we have a little bit of sort of privacy, um, regarding, we won't talk too much, uh, about various people's bets, who's betting about what, but I, this considering this is, if you read his Twitter feed, one of the least private guys I know, I'll, I'll feel comfortable saying it. Uh, Ben Wilnowski has been shorting some people. Um, he bet against a couple guys who had some final tables and he's been, you know, he's been making some like five or 10 grand bets kind of thing. Um, so he's, he's, I think he might be literally the only guy who's semi-routinely putting his money where his mouth is shorting people. We get a few smaller stakes betters, you know, betting 50 euros, trying to win two euros or something like that. But really, there, our volume comes from people risking a lot to win, or a little to win a lot, rather than a lot to win a little. So we, we I, I will, I've got to say props to Ben for basically being willing to do what we do, because it's, it's not fun risking thousands to win hundred bucks or something like that. So he's, uh, he's, uh, he's actually been doing that. And, but you know, we post these odds fairly often and most guys, it's all talk. Like, you know, we posted, we post our main event rates today, which I'm, I think are pretty, are pretty damn cool. And sort of like, I would say there's sort of like a pretty substantial disruption to the, uh, to the outright market, right? You know, normally it's like Daniel DeGrano, 70 to one odds. We have, you know, 400 to one, like we're giving much stronger odds. But basically, uh, I think that we like we like we won't find many other people who are going to lay in the opposite direction. And when we put this market out, even though it's just by far the best anyone's ever done for giving fair odds in the World Series main event, you still have people like, can we short these prices? Can we short these prices? And like, I mean, if people were willing to do it, sure. But like, we keep on trialing it in events that we think are perfect for it. And even in events that are ideal for it, where it's like, you know, the odds won't need to be that long, margins are really tight, we still don't get many people betting it. So there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of talkers out there in the poker world and not not a lot of people putting their money where their mouth is. I think it's just, you know, me and you, Matt. Nice dude. Did you say what's his name? William? Is that who you said who's actually doing it? Uh, ben Wilanowski. Uh, never never scared me was the name online. And is he is he publicly saying who he's shorting? Um I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think he has no. Um, but he's he would be one of the few guys who's like you know doing it for decent stakes. Maybe the only guy who's doing it for decent stakes on the stage. 
Yeah, dude, because everybody, everybody in the poker community, they, you know, they talk shit on each other. They think they're better than each other. And that, then they go in the hole. You provide this site and you're like, okay, here you go. You know, put your money up against these guys you say suck. And then no one does it. It's ridiculous. It, it is crazy. And it is just like, I mean, going through this is really, you know, I've, I've always, I, I think I was, I was maybe, I was maybe like 18 or so. And I've always had a lot of respect for Terrence Jam. I met him when I was maybe, I was 18, he was 24 or something. And I was at some dinner and he was basically saying, this is a pretty bold statement, but it's something I've always kind of lived by. And it's basically, you know, if you're a professional gambler and you're comfortable with the stakes, if you're, if you're stating opinions and not willing to bet on them, your opinions don't really mean anything. <laughs> and it's, you know, that's, that's kind of something I've always like sort of tried to live by where if I'm, if I'm stating something and I'm stating it like it's a fact, you know, I, will, I want to be willing to back it up. And I think that the vast, vast majority of people uh, don't back it up. So I've got to say, you know, props to Ben for backing up. Uh, I think a lot of guys don't. And I think that, you know, we've probably had, we've probably had, I would, I would guess maybe 500 people tweeting at us uh, about how they want to short our rates over the last six months. And, you know, only a couple actually doing it. So okay. it's, uh, it's interesting. A lot of talk. Yeah. A lot of talk. How, what's uh, what's the biggest bet you've taken this summer for World Series of Poker uh, on your site? Is someone? It, what's the biggest bet? Um. So uh, some of our so some of our bigger betters don't uh don't like talking too much about the stakes they're betting for. Uh, but we've had some big bets this summer. Uh, I I don't. Yeah. I let me let me see if I can think of there. I there have been. I, I'm quite confident there haven't been any six-figure bets, um, but there's definitely been a decent number of mid to high five-figure bets on, on long odds. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, those ones are often getting pretty relatively short odds. Like it'll often be someone to win a final table or something like that. Okay. Um, let me. Yeah, I mean, a lot of so basically, you know, with a lot of. A lot of the people who bet, they're in areas where taxes are more of a gray area um, than they'd be in Canada, kind of thing. So certain guys don't really want to talk, you know, too much about who their bets are. So like, I'll, I'll say I'll say Ben's big bets, but I don't really want to say some other guys' big bets. But we've had uh, we've had some fairly big bets going on. All right, all right, I got I get it. You got to protect the interests of your customers or whatever. You don't want to out these guys down in the Cayman Islands making these big bets. <laughs> All right, I get it. I get it. Look, I, people I know have to go look at this site. They want to see where they're priced at. It's like probably one of the only places where, you know, other than these, I don't know what, global poker rankings or career earnings, like poker players always want to know how they can stack up, measure up to e each other. Have you gotten any complaints from people saying, dude, I'm priced too high? Or is there anyone that you like to price low just to put a B in their bonnet? <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I mean, I don't want to go firing out any shots, but I definitely, um, I, our, our pricing isn't purely based on what we think people's expectation in terms of like, like we, we have, we do a lot of, I, we do a lot of mixing around with pricing. Like, I think that, you know, I, I think a lot of people have this idea that we, we, you know, we have this like, you know, magic crystal ball that we search into and we look in there and we price it all up at a rate that we can guarantee they're not winning. Like we, I mean, there we we intentionally make certain bets plus EV just to like see if they get taken. Like we we never try to make a bet really plus EV or anything, but we like we constantly are trying to give people good bets just to like test test out certain guys and see what their behaviors are and aren't like. And then the the, the one thing I will say we do just because um, this is something that. Uh, oh, a certain uh, a group of poker players like wasting our time, and we kind of try to fuck them over a little bit. So I'll just like I'll just try to get them to stop wasting their time by saying this like publicly. Um, anytime someone buys asks for a rate in a, in a tournament, we and we deduce that they won't be buying at that rate. We always price them in a way that is plus EV for them, because basically what we know what we know is a lot of people just want to use our services to determine their own markup. So to be like, let's just say we think a guy is winning 25% of the tournament. Typically, if, if that guy asked us for a rate, we would charge, say, 1.3 or 1.35. So let's say we had a set of 
so many guys then turn around and sell at 1.3. And they're basically like screwing their investors and they just, they only, they only ask us for a rate to make sure that they can price it down. So whenever guys that we suspect are doing that, ask us for rates, we always just tell them like, okay, 1.21. Like if you really want to bet it, like if this guy plays hundred dollar average buy-in, wants to go buy a piece of himself in a 1K buy-in, like, you know, sure you go make 3% off us. Like we respect people putting their money where their bet is and we'll give you that 3% odds edge, but we'd rather just price this guy down at 1.21 and try to force him to sell at 1.1 or 1.15 for wasting our time. Um, so there, there are definitely guys that we price down. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. We don't, we kind of, yeah, we just, we don't, we only want people giving us sort of real requests. We don't want people sort of wasting our time. So if people are wasting our time, we'll try to waste their money, I guess. Well, dude, can I give you a free marketing idea right here? Absolutely. So yeah. This is what you do. All right. You take, you know, the, the most sensitive person in the poker community. Let's let's just toss out a name, Phil Helmuth. Okay, we take, <laughs> we take Phil Helmuth and you set his main event odds at minus 10 million to one, okay? <laughs> just to let the word trickle back to Phil that he's 10,000 to one odds, that there's like literally like grandmas that are late regging that have better odds than him. Just watch him blow up on poker shares, dude, you're gonna get a viral Instagram video, him saying this site is a scam, they don't recognize I'm the greatest, boom, free marketing, Mikey. Man, this is honestly, this is this is great minds thinking alike right here. We, in the super high runner ball, we price Phil Halloween as the lowest of any professional, we priced him at like 0.99 in like an incredibly soft tournament. And basically, uh, someone sends a link to me and they're just like, yo, check this out. We skip to minute 32 or something. And I don't know Phil very well, but Phil's on some podcast. And then he's like, and there's some doubters out there. There's some guys who don't believe the math. They don't believe the stats. There's some, there's some haters like this Michael McDonald out there who, 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 who doubt the bracelets. Like they doubt the 14 bracelets. Like this, I've got 14, I've got 14 bracelets. And this guy, this guy, they don't know the map. They don't know the stats. Like I, I, I want to prove these guys. I want to prove to these guys that I've got what it takes. Like it was, it was basically exactly what you called. We did exactly that, and it got the exact desired effect. Like I, I didn't I, even. I don't, I'm not stealing ideas, dude. We arrived at this independently. We're fucking the same way. Like you know, we both saw the chair business. We both saw you know the healthy hacking business. Yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, when you. We we really um, yeah we do we do a little bit of that where we uh, just try try to like we, again the pricing isn't purely based on people's ability like I think I don't even think I don't even think Helmuth was the weakest pro in that field or anything but like you know I don't if he's winning three percent I don't mind selling him at point nine nine and take a four percent losing bet for some attention like we're we're very we're very much in just sort of like you know we don't like we don't really like you know again a lot of forms of marketing that we do for our business, I think just look kind of cheesy, sort of like if we're just like, you have to go make this better or not, because it's, you know, we're, we're in direct competition with our, our user base. So we think, we think basically sort of like hype driven marketing where people advertise for the site, like be without our request or whatnot is, is the ideal way to go about it. So yeah, that's uh that the Helmuth is a perfect example. And there's, you know, there's more and more guys where we're just like, you know, we're just very, uh, you know, we're, we're, we try to be pretty mindful of players' personalities. And we, we don't want to be, uh, you know, too cruel. We don't want to fire too many shots or anything like that. But we, you know, we want to we want to get attention for our business. And I, I knew as soon as I started doing this, you know, I'm, I'm going to burn some bridges. I'm go probably not going to lose any close friends. We're going to, like, you know, some acquaintances will probably, you know, not want to stay friendly with me and stuff. But... Yeah, that's, that's kind of uh, something that, that's inevitable when you're um, putting your money where your mouth is, I guess. Yeah, the, and speaking of uh, some little stunts, didn't you give uh, Kevin Hart a nice little free roll in the Super High Roller Bowl as well? Yeah, exactly. So that was, that was a pretty funny one. So Kevin, so we posted Kevin Hart's rate at 125 to 1. Um, and basically, you know, Kevin Hart reached out to me and he wanted to bet like $10,000 on himself uh, that he'd win. And I'm like, you know what, like we, we can't, take bets with Americans basically you know it's it's not like a reasonable option but I'm just like you know what this is just like good at because for a company I'm like you know what Kevin like we're not gambling I'll just give you like a 1.25 million free roll if you win this tournament so it's you know it's just something like you know there's you know there's always like you know room for him to gamble more with us room for him to like hype it up if he wins on social media like 
you know, there, there's a lot. He's he's like the thirtieth biggest Instagram following in the world and stuff. And just you know, having having good faith, like we we treat our bigger betters very well on the site. We treat like, and it's you know, he's you know, obviously he's you know American, uh, but like for you know for the higher stakes international users, we like we provide a like we kind of know where our value comes from as a company, and we're very willing to sort of give back to the like higher stakes users. So what happens, give me a hypothetical scenario when say someone does want to bet 100 Gs on Kevin Hart at those long odds to win the Super High Roller Bowl. Tell me what happens to the company, you guys take that bet, or do you take that bet, and what happens if he banks it? Yeah, so we, we set max losses on any tournament. Um, so basically, I think, in that, I think in that situation, I can't remember exactly, but I think our max loss may have been... 500,000 or something. Um, so if someone wanted to bet at 125 odds, the most they could bet is 4,000. So if someone, if someone bets 4,000, Kevin Hart wins, they win 500 grand. And then, you know, the company would pay them 500 grand. Cause like we're, we're, we're fine to pay a 500 grand loss. We don't really want to pay out a 12 and a half million dollar loss. And we also don't, we don't allow big enough bets that we think it could likely change the integrity of the game. Like, I don't think, I don't think that some guy, I think it's such a ridiculous parlay to have some guy bet on Kevin Hart and then like reach out to Kevin Hart and then have Kevin Hart go to the washroom and tell guys to like chip dump to him for a piece of his action. Like, I don't think that's going to happen in a term where winners six million, like 500 grand swing isn't going to influence the action. But, but like, like a, 12, a 12 million swing, like I don't care if he's a famous movie star. I just think there's a lot of room to be like, hey, look, I get heads up and just be like, hey, look, you know, first is six, second is three point six. Throw in the twelve point five on top to get the like eighteen point eighteen point five million. If he's just like, yo, man, if you try to come second, I'll give you seven million and guarantee that he gets like the seventeen million. Like, you know, we don't we don't want to fuck with the integrity of tournaments, and yep. that's that's why we don't let betting get too too out of hand on certain events. Okay, but you just unwittingly, dude, wrote the next great poker movie script starring kevin hart i think we call it like chip along and it's the scenario you just described some offshore billionaire wants to bet a million dollars on him to win he goes into the bathroom he's got like fedor holtz like giving him a swirly saying like you're gonna dump me your chips he's got all these germans in there big collusion dude great for poker great movie script we all get rid dude this is just great for the game this is what we need to happen our first big poker share scandal yeah, it'd be like it'd be like uh, Rounders 2.0. I mean, I mean, with poker share scandals, we it is like we are we are so cautious about trying to avoid potential scandals that it's just you know like it's really uh, you, like there's there's so like so, I I'm, I might be maybe the most requested player on the site because like most people join up because you know they trust me or think you know or, you know, like me or whatnot. So I get requested so much, but it's just like, our company could get in such bad shape if, as we get bigger, I play a hand poorly when some people bought pieces, and then people just get out of conspiracy theory thinking I lost intentionally. So it's like, I would love to give people a sweat, but like, you know, I've, I've told like a couple of our users, like, look, if you if you want to buy a piece of me, like, it's, I wouldn't do this for like someone who wants to buy like a dollar, but if someone wants to buy like 5% of my action, I've told you guys like, you know, buy, buy a share, through Mike McDonald, don't buy it through poker shares. Like I don't, I, I'm much more, I'm much happier having like uh, my integrity question than like the businesses. Like I think it, I think we're pretty close to poker shares getting to be a much bigger thing than me, I guess. So I think that it's, I think it's really important to prevent any, um, it, to prevent just like anyone thinking that something could be a scandal. So we're, we try to be extra, extra cautious to not, uh, to just, you know, not, to just see problems before they happen. And, you know, that's tough. Like there's, there's lots of things that, um, you know, there's lots of things that are just, you kind of need to weigh things out. Like it'll be like, let's say, you know, let's just say as an example, um, hmm. okay, here, here's, here's an example. Uh, you're like betting on, uh, how many bracelets countries are going to win? Okay. Um, so you can bet. You can bet on how many bracelets uh, the country is going to win, and it'll be like, let's say you want to bet on whether um, whether the UK is going to win 
more than three bracelets or less than three bracelets, okay? okay. Let's just say that's the number. Let's say more than three and a half, just for argument's sake. Let's just say they win two individual bracelets and then they win the team event, which involves two UK people. So now basically we have to decide, like or we have decided that that means that's four bracelets. But the thing is, if you say it's four bracelets, everyone who bet the under is gonna be like, well, they only won three events, like you're screwing us over. And then if you say, oh, it's under three bracelets, it's, it's only three bracelets, then everyone says, like, well, I can list off these four British guys who all won it. So it's like even offering those bets is just kind of, it's almost like a PR free roll against ourselves where we're, you know, we, we, we put these up because a lot of people are questioning them. There's a lot of just kind of sort of nationalism in poker and it's exciting in the World Series. Like, you know, they, they play your country's national anthem with every event. It's something like we thought this was a good thing to do, but we sort of did this in spite of the fact that we're fairly confident we're going to get some bad press, whatever the result is. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's, people love to complain and a, a dissatisfied customer can do so much more to hurt you than a satisfied customer can do to help you that you, you really, yeah, you really need to be mindful of everything that can possibly happen to make people think they're somehow getting cheated or something. And yeah, it's, 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 it's tough to see. It's, you really need to be fairly like foresightful to uh, see these things coming. And sometimes we see it before it happens, but sometimes we don't. Okay, but you just gave me another idea here. I'm going to have to throw at you, okay? You, <laughs> All talked right, nice. about, you talked about, you know, poker. There's a strong sense of nationalism with that. Everyone wants to root. Like, our country, our president, our head honcho is in the bed with Russia right now. What better way to rally the country together than to all of us, if we theoretically could be on poker shares, and short the Russians in the World Series of Poker? That's how we fire back. This is the Cold War 2.0, shorting the Russians in the World Series of Poker on poker shares. Is that a bet people could theoretically make? Uh... It's not a bet Americans could make because we can't allow American users. Okay, so <laughs> X so the, Rus the Russians might be beating you guys in this cold war if they if they can go short the Americans. So you oh, gotta yeah. you gotta be careful here. Yo, Russians, do it. Go try to short us Americans in the World Series of Poker. I dare you. All right, Mike, give them the odds. Tell them what they need to do to try to short us, and then let's see what's up. <laughs> that's uh, that, I mean, that's a good that's that's a pretty funny idea, and there there is a lot of that that goes on. Like there is. There are a lot of people who just like one country thinks other countries suck, and it's 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 cool to see just the user behavior. Like the guys bet on guys from their own country, the guys bet on certain people to lose. Like sometimes we'll post a final table with seven guys, and then someone will bet five of those seven guys, where he's basically just saying he's not quite shorting, but he's he's basically just saying you two guys suck. I'm gonna bet one of the other five winners. Like we, you know, it's we see a lot of different behavior and. Tying that into people's uh, nationalism, I think, could uh, could definitely be uh, a popular thing. All right. All right. Well, speaking of bracelet bets, your boy, Pete Manzanelli, is going to be out in Las Vegas. I'm going to be playing a couple events. I'm going to be playing event number 68, 3K No Limit, and event 74. I'm going to play that uh, 1K one drop. What, kind of, what do I need to do to get Mans up there on Poker Share? What are the odds on me taking down a bracelet? What are the odds? Uh, the odds of you taking down a bracelet, three big field events, uh, forgot, I mean, probably something like 500 to, 500 to 1 against winning a bracelet or something like that. Dude, I like that, uh, I like that. That's... Probably, probably, so probably somewhere in that range. Uh, I, I need to see how big that 3K event is, but yeah, probably, yeah, somewhere in the three to 500 range or something. And then, uh, also, we also do like buying pieces people like that. There, I need to figure out a little more about your, uh, your background, like I know you talk a big game, but uh, everyone, everyone in poker talks a big game. So we'll, uh, I can, I can, I can do some research, and then yeah, you know, we can, we can put some prices up if some of uh, some of your viewers and fans uh, want to get a spot. Yeah, don't don't Google my hand in mob. I'll just send you over. Um, I'll send you over an image of my hand in mob page. Don't you worry about it. All right, sounds, sounds good. Yeah, the, no, but hey, to all the Mans fans out there, this is a buying opportunity. You said he put me at 500 to 1. I got it more like 2 to 1, so get in on that action. <laughs> Dude, it's, uh, it's, it's great money. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, or either that or you give me the, give me the Kevin Hart deal, dude, because I want to bet on myself. Dude, I want the Mans and Will you give me a Pete Manzanelli bracelet free roll bet? Uh, yeah, I mean, sure. I'll, I mean, I'm not going to go as generous as uh, Kevin Hart. 
we all, I'll send you 10 grand if you want a bracelet. Hell yeah, dude. Did you just hear that right there? 10 grand. All right, dude. We're doing it. That's what I needed right. was a little little motivation. I needed some bulletin board material, some Mike Timex not believing in me. 10K. Here we go. All right. All right. Yeah. I like that. Hey, this is good marketing for you, dude. This is like you scratch my back, I scratch yours, dude. I got you. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. This, is, this should be fun. All right, dude. I like that. I'm going to I'm gonna throw that into the mix, dude. We'll get, we got some more money on the line here. Um, one of the other things, uh, and this is this is getting very emotional and very serious for me while I'm out in Las Vegas, I'm going to be doing some research. I'm going to hit up Bobby's room, dude. I'm going to be asking people in the foyer if they've seen my dear friend, the missing Tom Dwans. I know you're very connected in the poker space. I need to know, do you have any intel on his whereabouts or well-being? I have, I have no idea. I haven't, I haven't talked to him. I used to talk to Tom a little bit when I was younger, but I haven't talked to him in five years probably. Okay. No, no clue. Okay, dude. You know, I'm hearing stuff about Macau. I don't know what I got to do. Um, you know, he's a dear friend. I, I'm worried about him. A lot of people in the poker world um, need to know what he's up to, and I'm not going to stop until I uh, I meet him face to face, man's to man's. Yeah, I mean, I had, I had some bets on this. Uh, I had some bets on this uh, Dirty Jungle Man challenge. So if you let him, if you let him know, let him know that there's. Uh, if you see him, let him know that there's many people that would like to figure out where he's at and uh, if he plans on continuing. All right, dude. I'll keep you posted for sure. I'll keep you posted. So let's let's wrap up here. I'll let you get on your way. What do you tell though people like me, cold blooded Americans, what to do? Do we just kind of be like, oh, poker shares? It's cool that it's a thing, and forget about it. Put it on the back burner. How can we get involved with your site if we can't even get to it on the web page? I mean, I don't know. Write write to your senator and hope for legislation change. Like there's, I mean, it's we're already in the phase of acquiring more licenses. Like you know, certain there's certain other countries, you know, uh, you know, Denmark, France. Like there's plenty of there's plenty of countries that our our Curacao license restricts us from getting users from there. Um, we're actually in the process of applying for more licenses. Uh, our business is growing much more rapidly than we originally uh, expected it to. So we're trying to like you know rush it down, get more licenses. If it gets if it gets to the point that it seems reasonable that like uh, you can get like a Nevada sports betting license online for a price point that's not too insane, um, and in a time frame that's not too insane, it's it's conceivable that for next World Series this could be done. Like I I wouldn't expect it. I wouldn't expect it in 2017. But if things move in that direction, like we're I I, I saw that some art someone linked me to an article basically saying that. A bill was passed allowing Nevada esports betting, and somehow they tied the WSOP in with that. I couldn't find good articles on it. If anyone finds good articles, could they tweet them at me? Because like this seems like a somewhat legitimate thing. And if it's feasible that World Series betting could become a thing by by 2018 World Series, it'd be massive for our business. Like things have been crazy lately, and it's you know things have been crazy betting on you know random study tournament and really anyone who gives a shit about study is in vegas right now <laughs> so it's it would be it would be big for our business if we could allow that and we would obviously love that um so it's, it's something for the time being you can't really get involved you know there's some there's some random guys on twitter you know just like kind of piggybacking off our rates and booking people and stuff like that but as far as actually using the poker shares product there's no real options for americans right now i, I guess the one thing i should say is being an American citizen isn't what restricts you from using our site. The two things that restrict you from using our site are using a, being in the U.S., like having a U.S. IP address, and then having a U.S. address. So you know, if you if you rent a place up in Canada, when you're up in Canada, you can go. No, no, I'm serious, I'm serious about this. Like okay, we actually okay, okay, we sorry. actually do track <laughs> we do track these things, and we're we're very we take it very seriously. I as much like be fun and games like. The, the U.S. gambling laws are very strict. I don't want to fucking end up in prison, so I, uh, I definitely, you know, want. <laughs> yeah, no, basically, you know, an American in Canada with Canadian address with Canadian IP address can bet, but uh, that's that's it. Well, look, dude. If if all this goes away and the government ends up shutting it all down, do you know what we're all do? We're just gonna all join Ray. High, you know, going through the forest looking for this treasure. That's what we're gonna have to do. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, that would be a fun thing to handicap. Get a thousand guys out there, price them all out, and be like a World Series kind of thing. Awesome, dude. Are you gonna be making it down to Vegas, or are you gonna stay up there? Yeah, I'm gonna head down. Uh, what day is it? 
Uh, I'll probably head down in like a week and a half or something like that. I'm, I'm not really in any rush, but the main event's so fun. Like, it, it, I, it's such a, I'm so different from a lot of poker players. Like, there's always that thing that the saddest day of the year is the day when a poker player uh, busts the World Series main event. Like, for me, I just like, when I'm playing the World Series main, yeah, exactly. I, I, just, I just have this sort of like euphoric, almost like nostalgic sort of feeling where I'm just like, look, like, look, just, it's almost like I'm reflecting on the last sort of, you know, decade of my life, just being like, look how far I've come that, you know, I used to think this would be a dream to be here. And now I'm just like, you nine guys are fucking terrible. <laughs> like, you know, I can, I can just kind of sit down, mostly know what people are doing, you know, know that I've got one of the best shots in the tournament, see a lot of my friends. It's so nice. Like, I love deep stack tournaments. And it's so nice to just play a tournament where, you know, even in EPTs and other fair WPTs, it's just like occasionally just lose a few small plots, go card in for a bit, and you went from 100 blinds to 30 blinds, and you barely noticed it. But the World Series just has such an insane structure where it's just, I just find it this sort of this peaceful, fun thing that I know I'll probably never find a table. I know I might never get top 100 in my life, but I just really enjoy the process of it. And it feels just kind of like, almost like a just like vacation I can just go and appreciate how lucky I am to be a pro poker player. So I, I love the main event. And even even though I'm more on the business end, uh, I'm really excited for that tournament. Nice, dude. Well, uh, you know, I'm going to be out there. Uh, I'm playing that. That event starts on the 6th. I think it wraps up on the 8th, so I should be receiving my bracelet on the 9th. I'll probably be tracking you down in the real hallway for 10K okay. cash right after that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have two flags ready for you. Excellent. Actually, I might want it in Bitcoin. Okay, well, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Uh, all right. So, sounds good. Excellent, dude. So where, uh, let's, everybody, you can find him on uh, Twitter, Mike McDonald 89 You can also check out PokerChairs.com if you're not in the United States. Anything else you want to plug uh, before I let you go? Yeah, I'd, I'd just say, you know, social media, PokerShares on Twitter, PokerShares on Instagram. And we're always posting rates, markets, and you can you can get a good glimpse of things even if you can't view the website. Like social social media and the Facebook page, poker shares as well. Uh, you can just see a lot of what's going on with our business even if you can't see the website. Awesome, dude. Well, for Mike McDonald, I'm Pete Manzanelli. You're watching on PokerTube. Get paid. Get laid. Get laid.